Okay, so I would like to talk a little bit about stretching and uh, in particular the Sean Lane style diminished and augmented style stretchy licks. Um, uh, they're difficult, they might be doable for you. Um, so, you know, don't say it's inhuman, okay? You can, it is manageable. Um, what do I need in order to be able to uh, get my hands into those positions? Well, the first thing is I need the guitar in a good playing posture. Now, this kind of playing posture where the guitar uh, runs across my right leg and kind of underneath my, uh, my right arm is great for a lot of things, but it's not good for this, okay? The reason is that my hand will tend to come in behind the neck. My wrist is behind the neck here. Okay, and my thumb tends to go over the top. What this will do is it will severely limit my potential stretch. Okay, so here I can just about manage a diminished arpeggio on the uh, ninth fret high E string, 9, 12, 15. Okay, but I can't really uh, take that across the strings. Okay, if I try to take that across the strings, with my hand in this position. What, what's happening is my, my stretch is getting smaller as I move up. You can see that as I try to move up towards the, the thumb, the space that I can get between those fingers is, is shrinking. Okay? So that posture is not going to work. Typically what we really need is the guitar fairly high, usually some kind of classical posture, um, more classical type posture. This isn't really a classical guitar. That would usually be a little bit higher still. Um, but, you know, this kind of position. And I want to come from underneath as much as possible. Okay? So I want my wrist to come from underneath uh, as much as possible. And I want to maintain as, as straight a wrist as I can. Okay? Um, so here we can see that I can get that stretch and I can even bring it down into the low strings. Okay, so now I have that diminished stretch. Like that, okay. Okay, but once you have the stretch, how do you take it across the strings? That's not obvious, and it's not, uh, it's not necessarily easy if you don't know what you're, you're trying to achieve. What I can't do is pin my thumb uh, with heavy pressure into the back of the neck uh, first reason I can't do that is because it will uh, anchor me in position and I, I need to be mobile here, okay? The other thing that uh, it'll do is it will create tension in my forearms and just generally reduce my mobility and I, I don't want that. I want to stay as loose as I possibly can, okay? Um, so suppose I have good position here. What I also cannot do is I cannot pin and pivot, okay? I can't maintain a thumb position, a pressured thumb position, and try to pivot my wrist around that, okay? Because what's going to happen is be, by the time I'm on the low E string, I'm going to have a severe bend in my wrist, and this is going to be painful. Um, if I'm in a good position on the high E string here, I am not going to be in a good position on the low E string. It's just not uh, something I can achieve here. What can I do? Well, if I keep my thumb low, uh, pointed mostly up, but a little bit in the direction of my index finger. And now I keep my wrist as straight as I can on the low E string. And now I'm going to move the hand as a unit. Okay? So I'm not rolling like this off the back of the neck. Like that. Instead, I'm moving the entire hand up and down. Okay? And there is a bend in the wrist, but it never moves into that extreme hard position where, where it becomes very, very severe and very painful, okay? Um, that bend in the wrist is manageable throughout. Okay, so get my position and as much as possible move the hand as a unit from the low strings to the high strings and vice versa, okay? Uh, now that I have that and I have that posture, I can move across the strings. Okay. Um, I 
and you can go pretty quickly because uh, there's no severe pressure on the wrist. Yeah, okay. Um, I can do that stretch, that diminished stretch, down to about the sixth fret. Okay. Um, after the sixth fret, it's it's just too severe on my wrist. Even when I try to maintain good posture and move uh, the entire hand as a unit, on the low E strings, the angle in the wrist is just too severe for me. I can't really do it. But um, sixth fret is manageable for me. Okay. Uh, Sean demonstrates on the ninth fret, and that's very manageable for me. It's not really all that uncomfortable at all, actually. Um, the augmented stretch, on the other hand, is a little bit uncomfortable, and I don't think there are many positions that this can be played on the guitar uh, that are really even, you know, achievable at all for most of us. But it can be done in the positions that Sean demonstrates. Uh, Sean demonstrates on the 11th fret, so the uh, second finger is on the 15th, and the fourth finger is on the 19th fret, and with the same uh, kind of unit movement of the hand, moving the entire hand as a move uh, as a unit. That stretch is achievable for me. Like that. And it's it's tricky, and I you know I would need to be warm to be. very, very comfortable with it, but it is achievable for me. Um, and higher in the neck, for example, 13th fret. It really just starts to feel more like the, uh, the diminished arpeggios, um, you know, a little bit lower down, maybe at about the 9th or 10th fret. Uh, this one I can manage on the 10th fret. If I try it on the 9th fret, it's the same as the diminished on the 5th. Uh, that's just too severe on my wrist. Okay, tenth fret. It's okay. Um. I can do it. Um, and I'm sure a lot of you who think you can't do it probably could do it if you uh, if you could approach the uh, instrument at the right angle and really get your hand in the right spot. But that's where the issue comes in. You may not actually be able to do that for a reason that's entirely beyond your control. So, uh, that's quite an unusual guitar. This, by the way, is a 25 and a half inch scale. It's a full scale guitar, a Stratocaster scale guitar. Sean's guitar was a 24 and three quarter inch, okay, like a Gibson. So his scale length is actually shorter than mine, and uh, um, it's quite possible that any benefit I'm getting from the, uh, you know, headless shape is, is being counteracted by the longer scale length, I'm not sure. But let's, let's look at a conventional guitar again. This kind of position across my right knee, uh, under my right arm, this is just not going to work. Okay, I'm never going to get my wrist in the right position here. Okay, if I take it to a classical posture, I'm now starting to get to a position where I can actually make that diminished stretch again, but now there's a problem. Okay, this lower horn is blocking my wrist. Okay, we can see here that if I try to do this on the ninth fret, where I had no trouble on the other guitar, I'm actually bumping my wrist a lot of the time into that horn. And this is quite a sensitive area on my wrist. If I hit that, it's quite painful. Okay, um, so that might not be uh, achievable. Okay, uh, maybe I can go a little bit lower. So, that's fine, but not that ninth fret now where I had no, no difficulty before, it, I'm, I'm blocked by this, this horn, okay? Um, so even if I'm higher where the stretch is narrower and it should not be so severe, that lower horn is impeding the ability of my hand to move in a comfortable position. Uh, and that's a real problem. Okay, also the blocky neck heel here 
uh, might prevent me from getting my thumb into a comfortable position very high. Um, this guitar, the Stratocaster, has a, you know, a, a rounded lower horn, okay? Um, upper fret axis is, is limited, but, you know, it's not the most, I mean, it's painful, but it's not the most painful thing in the world if I, if I hit my wrist off, off this lower horn. I also have an Ibanez, which has a much sharper horn, um, with a very hard corner on it. And when I hit my wrist off that, it really hurts. It's, you know, enough to discourage me from even trying it on that guitar. Um, so I wouldn't do it. But the actual stretch um, into the augmented position, I could do it with this guitar if this were not in the way. When this is in the way, I have to roll my, you know, I have to move my wrist through the position of the lower horn. I just can't do it. Um, and you can see that on, a, on Parallax, Sean's guitar has a horn which is much deeper into the guitar. Uh, it's not out near uh, his wrist. It's it's uh, not in his way. Okay. Um, try out. Try, try it out. Try the position. See how you get on. But I think it's achievable if you uh, if you can get the guitar in the right spot.